Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and today I'll be concluding my Beetle Brushless Gearbox project. The reason I began this project was that I got fed up with the deficiencies of the Servo City Econ gear motors I'd been using in Division. I knew that brushless drive was a thing for a while, but comparing the expense of a ready-made brushless solution with my brushed counterparts turned me away initially. The main issue I had with the Econ gearboxes was the soft 4mm shaft, and until a few weeks ago there were no brushless conversion kits with bigger shafts. Then I discovered the readily available Pluto gear set, which is a 15 to 1 gear set utilizing quality metal gears, bronze bushings, and a long beefy 6mm steel output shaft. By designing and 3D printing my own plastic gearbox housing, I knew I should be able to gain all of the benefits of increased speed, torque, and reduced weight from brushless, with all the toughness advantages afforded by the beefy gears and shaft. So I got to work. Problems and Solutions at the time of my part 1 video, I was trying a variety of gearbox materials, from PLA to nylon to polycarbonate. I ran into unique problems with each. PLA would soften at too low of a temperature, nylon was too flexible, polycarbonate was brittle like glass. I needed a material with some give to allow for press fitting dowel pins and bushings without cracking, and the material needed to be stiff enough to hold up to high temperature that the motors could reach. Thus, I started to look at fiber filled nylon composite materials. Just one problem, I couldn't print them on my Prusa. So I got a broken and unused printer and replaced everything needed to get it printing carbon fiber nylon. More on that the card above. With this material change, a little added white lithium grease, and no other design tweaks, I managed to get Division driving around perfectly fine on these gearboxes. In fact, they worked so well the forces they were putting on my PLA printed hubs were causing the washers to pop right off. So I redesigned those hubs as well, with a much tighter fit on the shafts, an adaptation of Fingertex twist hub design. Originally I strayed from this due to the difficulty of getting the foam wheels on the hubs, but it also keeps the wheels on even without the washer attached at all. Now take a look at some test footage of me driving Division around my apartment. Drive testing. During these tests I was doing a couple of different things. First, I was getting used to how fast the bot moved, accelerated, and turned, and working to trim out any veer to one side or the other. Second, with the duct tape roll, I was trying to practice quickly and accurately hitting a target opponent bot. The faster you drive into an opponent with a spinning weapon, the harder they get hit due to the increased fight. This is why I don't mind having an unusable top speed, as long as the bot accelerates quickly it hardly matters. While performing these drive tests, I also discovered a weird issue with the hubs where sometimes after several minutes of driving around fine, one side would just slide off the shaft. I undersized both hubs to 5.9mm diameter so they would press onto the shafts, but it seems like plastic likes to creep under constant stress, so it would be smart to use a dab of hot glue to keep them adhered during a fight. Pressing them on works fairly well for testing though, I was able to drive around for more than 4 minutes before one came off. If that doesn't sound good enough for you, Cosman already announced he'll be selling machined aluminum hubs to pair with these shafts, though they currently have no set price and aren't available for purchase. While you watch this footage, I'd like to thank every one of you who have subscribed over the past 11 months or so. I finally hit 500 subscribers, putting me halfway to a point where YouTube actually gives a crap about me. Maybe you aren't aware that you can't enter the YouTube Partner Program to get paid a cent without 1000 subscribers and 4000 watch hours in the past 12 months. In fact, more than 52% of my channel views are from unsubscribed viewers, so if you like what you see and haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about my future videos. Design Tweaks so now that I had working gearboxes and hubs, that's it, right? Well, no. I couldn't leave just well enough alone, and while the gearboxes work fine, they're a bit finicky to put together, and I don't like the slop required for using the retaining nuts to assemble the boxes. So instead of 4M3 screws and nuts, I switched to printing pilot holes for 613 by 3 quarter inch plastite screws to hold the box together. I added a matching boss and cutout to align the halves of the gearbox to aid in pressing in the dowel pins. I've also increased the thickness of the material around the motor side dowel pins, which should make it so that the gearboxes are both easier to assemble and stay healthier longer than before, and it saves a few grams to boot. I still have M3 nuts to attach to Division's frame, but that's a trivial redesign if you know how to use Fusion yourself. Speaking of which, make your own! Multiple people have asked if I'd be selling these, and the answer is no. However, if you're looking to make your own, or even to help support my channel, I'm going to upload all of the latest CAD files for the gearboxes and hubs to my web store, and list them for free. This will give you access to the full Fusion 360 model including the gearbox, 1806 motor, gear set, and the list of hardware you'll need to build these yourself, with the correct material densities for everything if you're using the model in Fusion. I'll also include a bill of materials with links to where I bought all the parts I'm using in the description. Note, at the time of filming though, the Pluto gear set that I used is on back order, but it should be restocked eventually. I'm going to make the listing have an optional donation, but you can type any number into the price box that you want down to zero dollars. 
If you cannot afford to donate or simply choose not to, a few kind words in the comments will suffice. Positive comments genuinely do motivate me to keep making content and releasing my designs for you all. Also, if you can't print CF Nylon yourself, you could try using EndBot's Onyx printing service. No clue what the tolerances are, but Mark IV printers should be pretty damn accurate. The hubs, spacers, and washers can be printed in basically any filament and should work fine. What's next? Let me know in the comments if you all would like a simple video instruction set for assembling the gearboxes, which I'd link in the store page for everyone to use. It's pretty straightforward, with the only tricky part being to push the brushless motor shaft through to the opposite side and press or hammer the pinion gear on. About a month ago, I asked people about their preferences for future videos, and one idea that I floated then, which I haven't yet done, is a video about how I make these videos. For each of my videos, I usually spend about a dozen hours working on the project at hand off camera, and at least six hours scripting, filming, and editing, though often more than ten hours just at my computer editing and recording voiceover, all for the good of this wonderful sport and to help out all of you fellow builders. I'm thinking if there's still interest in that, I might make it a one year anniversary video for the channel. I started this channel on September 10th, 2019, and my first edited and produced video went up September 29th, so you can expect that the video would be posted somewhere around those dates. However, Norwalk Havoc is returning right about the week in between those, so it might make it a little bit delayed if I have to prepare a bunch beforehand. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And if you want to make your own brushless gearboxes, make sure you check out the store page linked down below in the description.